Question, how does someone work as an iron worker, assembly line worker, a bartender, a fisherman in Alaska, and their country club golf pro, and then realize something almost seemingly impossible of dreaming of winning a PGA Championship? Guess we have to ask Tom Ward for that, because that's what he did. Grew up on a farm in Michigan, didn't play golf till he was 25. But that's what he could do best, play golf. He turned pro in 1976 and spent most of his pro career as the head pro at Greenville Greenview Golf Club in Centralia. He won events like the Illinois PGA Sectional, the Gateway PGA Sectional. In 1987, he was able to start playing a few PGA Tour events. Over the next few years, he played six PGA events, won a grand total of $16,000. But the dream was still there. And in 1993, Tom was 50 years old and eligible to join the Senior Tour, the Champions Tour as it's called. Almost like magic, almost like magic he found his game. He was a relative unknown in 1993 and stunned the world of golf by winning the PGA Senior Championship. He shot 69, 69, 68, and 70 and won in the playoff against Bruce Crampton. He became the first club pro in the modern era to win a major. Tom found a home on the senior tour, played in 471 events, banked over $8 million in prize money. So tonight we say well done to Tom Wargo and welcome him into the Illinois Wing for St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. Tom, come on up. Todd is doing the interview. Hello. It's wow. working. Oh, sorry. Well, to start, congratulations. But second thing, I want to ask a question that's probably going to tick off about half the people in this room who are duffers like me. Uh, PGA Senior Tour Championship, and you started golfing when? My late twenties. Oh, we still on? My late twenties. Yeah. Your late twenties. Yeah. So you started, and and immediately became a teaching club pro. Now. Not at that time. I was still trying to teach myself. You were trying to teach yourself, which is my next one. How does one at in their late twenties go about teaching themselves the game of golf good enough so that they can join the PGA tour? Thousands of golf balls. <laughs> you just hit a thousand golf balls. I hit about a thousand golf balls per <laughs> round. <laughs> well, then you need to find a pool game or something. <laughs> 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 Yeah, that's expensive, isn't it? <laughs> no, I used to hit a lot of golf balls. If it didn't work one way, I'd just try another way. If it didn't work this way, I'd try another way. And then finally, I figured out how to keep it somewhere in play. And so you're Without telling, losing a thousand balls. <laughs> well, you were telling me earlier that, that you just kind of kicked around Southern Illinois, uh, made a little money on the weekend, $16,000, as, as Ron says. You only played four tournaments for the regular PGA Tour. Why not more? Well, because uh, I wasn't qualified to play for that, but uh, as a club professional, I qualified for four of the uh, PGA championships, which you can do, which the PGA is sponsored by the PGA of America. So I was a club pro and a member of the PGA of America, and you qualified for that, and I got to play in those. You got to play in those, and then, of course, you go to the, the senior tour at the age of 50, uh, and this is the year after you become the PGA club pro um, of the year, which was the bigger thrill. Well, it's one of the greatest uh, accomplishments I ever did because I was, um, by the PGA of America, I was selected player of the year when I was 49 years old amongst all the kids. And there was 23,000 uh, members of that PGA at the time. Of course, all of them didn't play, but uh, that was a goal of mine at 19. Before I turned 50, I said, well, I'm going to try to do this. And there's about four or five events that you play in during the year and you get points and qualify for it. At that. And one of them was... Uh, Speaking of the PGA Championship, it was at Belle Reve in 1992, and everybody remembers that, I believe. I finished 28th there against all the kids there, and that kind of set me off on the ground that I could at least play a little bit of golf when I was 49. So that boosted you the confidence in the very next year, the PGA uh, Senior uh, Champion? Yeah, 1993. I was, I was exempt for that tournament. And it was at a golf course in Florida, their PJ National, which I had played a lot of golf on. I'd already won a couple of tournaments. So the media never asked me that question. Never asked me if I ever played on this, the home of the club professional. And uh, I went around there in four rounds, and I knew a lot about the golf course, where to hit it, and what not to do on that golf course. And, and sure enough, next thing I know, I'm uh, 
fighting for the lead the last couple holes, and uh, it was a great, great thrill for us to be able to do that and accomplish uh, what you was trying to do. You know, playing sports is a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, a lot of hard work. People don't quite understand exactly what it's all about. It's about a thousand golf balls on a weekend. At least, at least. Yeah. And then four more uh, championships after that. Are you saying you're the consummate late bloomer? Is that right? Are you the consummate late bloomer? You might say that, I guess. I don't know. I was just something I was trying to do. I love the game so much, and and uh, next thing you know, you're, you're trying to compete against some of the best and see where you stand. You're always, it's always a measuring stick when you get to compete against somebody, yeah. And you're still a pro to this day? Yes, I am. I don't play much golf anymore. I got other things I want to do, and... Uh, and so, and besides, my tee ball only goes out there about 187. <laughs> so, uh, but I don't lose many. I don't lose many. Well, I have to ask one more question. Uh, you know, we lost one of the great golf legends in the past year in Arnold Palmer. Just wonder if you could kind of share uh, what you knew of Arnold competing against him and hanging out in the clubhouse with him. Well, uh, they had a tournament out there called the uh, Legends, and it was a team tournament. And when I got exempt out there, and Arnold's at this one tournament, he's down the other end of the range, and I'm down there, and I'm kind of eyeballing him down there. I never met him before, and uh, I won this tournament, and, uh, and uh, I said, well, I wonder if I walk down there, and uh, I asked him to play, if he'll play in this doubles tournament with me. I don't, I don't even know if he knows me or not, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get enough energy and some go down there and ask him. So I go down there and I ask him, Arnold, would you play with me? And I, uh, well, he says, let me think about that. That was somewhere around April or, or May, and uh, I don't hear from him, I don't hear from him. All of a sudden, I get a phone call somewhere about, about October. Yeah, he says, I'll play with you. Come on. So I got an opportunity to play about four or five years as my partner in, in the Legends Tournament, which was a real thrill for me. And we got to be pretty good friends. We play a lot of practice rounds, and, and the only bad thing about Arnold, he never paid his bets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to witness that too. <laughs> Bob Golby told me a very similar story very recently. About yeah, he was pretty. He was pretty tight around the wall at that time. The idea was that he was a tremendous competitor, though. He oh did. yeah, even in even in the practice rounds. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, Tom Wargo, congratulations again. Thank you for being here, ladies and gentlemen. Tom Wargo. Thank you. Thank you for having me. By the way, Tom and I did uh, two years of television. We did two years of television. Uh, Tom Margo's uh, television show is nationally syndicated.